there has been a change in society. A change where more and more disabled people are not letting their disability control their lives. A change where services and legislations have helped disabled people to live an equal life. Things have not always been like this. I was quite in denial at first. I didn't want to accept help. One would tell people that I was disabled and I hated that word. But we have come a long way. Hi, my name is Maya, and here are two strong disabled women talking about their experience growing up with a disability. My name is Caprice Kwai. When I was about 10, I went to my grandma's house and I tripped over my sister's leg. I dislocated my knee. I started using crutches from then. Throughout the years, I was diagnosed with osteoarthritis, hypermobility and muscle wasting, a whole range. My name is Aisha, I'm 22 years old and I have a disability called hemiplegia. This affects the right side of my body, so it's a weakness to one side of your body. So growing up, I've always had like problems with my legs and knees and ankles, and I was born with calipes. When I was about five, my knees started dislocating. It was hard when I had my big dislocation and my leg just went wrong and it was in a hill. And that's when a lot of the problems started happening. As Caprice developed her disability at a later stage of life, Aisha had developed her disability at birth. During my childhood, I felt very innocent in the terms of being able to show and express my true self. I was able to dress how I liked, speak how I liked, express myself to people because I felt like I wasn't being judged at that time. My mind was very innocent, so I wasn't put into a place where I had to feel like I needed to change or I needed to adapt to my surroundings because I didn't know any better. I just felt like I could be my true self around people because I was young. I loved child hospitals. Everything was quick. In the child service, it's more time, care, it's more efficient. I couldn't bend my legs, so it fused straight. Um, so they were meant to put me under anesthetic and basically break my leg and put it into a cast and break it every few weeks. I was in a CPM machine, which is a continuous passive motion machine. So my leg is in like this contraption, I like bends it. And I was in hospital for about three or four weeks, just in that machine. You would get treatments, they gave me exercise, they did casts, which helped me. I was on my tiptoes all the time, so then I had an operation to straighten out my foot. The recovery was hard because I spent nine months of my leg not bending, so when it finally could bend, I had to like retrain my mind, my body to like walk properly again. To this day, he hasn't given me no problem except for my baby toe, which gives me pain. But I'm looking to sort that out in a couple of months' time because I'm due for a procedure. I had to get an operation called a femoral osteotomy. So right now I have a long plate down here with screws to keep my leg in place. I'm so used to my mum like speaking up for me. When this happened, I was 10 as well. So I was young, mum would talk for me. Um, but obviously now that I'm 18, it's hard to like try and fight and push to get the services that I need. I think it was hard on my mum um, because she just, she just kept fighting the hospitals, battling with consultants, trying to like find what was going wrong with me and my leg. 
I was promised to have like a smooth transition to adult services, but there was no transition. They just left me. I feel like the adult services now, they just want to write you off, you know? They'll see you and then you won't hear for them from, I don't know, maybe six months. So transitioning from children to adults was so hard and it still is hard because I'm still trying to get the right services. When I hurt my leg, things were just different at school. The teachers didn't really believe that I had a disability at the time. They just thought, like, I thought I was going to get better. Um, so they were like, just little things that the teachers didn't know how to deal with. Like, me wanting to go and take my medication. Some teachers wouldn't allow me to go and take my medication. In secondary school, I was still growing and I didn't really care about what people thought but of course when you go through your stages when you get a teenager you start to realize uh, why is this person looking at me why am I walking this way why do I feel like I can't do things that normal people can do in the time space that they've given us so I would take more time to do tasks and people will start wondering why they'll ask questions and I didn't really want them to know about my disability. Most recently I started at a fashion college and I just had my last operation so I was in a wheelchair and they were not accommodating at all. It prevented me from attending lessons and oh, I just wasn't happy so I left. I felt like I was no one like compared to all the other kids doing the course and I had to leave because of their mistakes. We're right at the bottom. Oh, good grief. Can I take a moment? The university was quite hard for me because I had a stroke. So my development is slower than others so it takes longer to get things like maths english science we're in university you don't have the help that is needed but i got through i don't have a problem with people asking me what my disability is because i will tell them but it's the fact that my mindset is very different i feel like when they look at me automatically my mind's telling me oh they're talking about me negatively. I just don't like it when people just stare because I know I walk a certain way but I'll style it out so it's like oh she's just full of herself but really and truly I'm insecure inside. I don't feel comfortable with my disability at the moment I'm still learning. Yeah just don't want it. As Aisha and Caprice go through a challenging childhood, both have now accepted their disability and started to follow their goals despite the struggles they have been through. I started like modelling last year and every modelling job I get is different. I actually work in school, so we um, work with children that are excluded. Some of them have disabilities, like myself. Some of them have ADHD, behaviour management issues. I've done a runway show with both my crutches. I went to Ireland to do a demo. I've done a body positive campaign in a bikini. So every job I've been on, they've been like accommodating. I wouldn't say every location has been accessible. There's always like stairs or you're getting changed in like a corner of a room. The accessibility is not great, but the people are like really helpful. The whole idea of the school is to develop relationships and role models to the children. Sometimes it can be difficult. It's really rewarding as well because you see them grow. I must have told someone which was HR that I had a disability, but not my colleagues that I work with. 
until like a later date when I felt comfortable that they should know. Because I work in a school, I'm around children. So it's good for my colleagues to know that I have a disability so they're aware of it. When I was walking home with a colleague and he asked, are you okay? Like, why am I limping? And I told him and it was completely fine. The children, I'm guessing, I think they know, but you know how children are. They ask questions and you have to explain it. But I feel like because I work in a school where children misbehave and exclude from school, it brings me closer to them because they feel like, oh, okay, she has something, not wrong with her, but is less able or something in common because you know disadvantaged children or children that, that have ADHD they feel like oh like no one is on their side or they can't relate to someone so I feel like me having a disability in, in that case brings me closer to the children. They need to hire more disabled models and like campaigns and stuff and that's one of the reasons why I started modeling because if you look at me sitting down without my crutch you're just like there's nothing wrong with me but if I get up and walk, I walk with a limp. For me, I wanted to see more like mobility aids in pictures. So every time I like do a shoot, I make sure that my crutch is always in the picture with me. They just need to start casting more diverse models, visible differences as well. So you can actually see the disability. When Leanne asked me, she said, do you want to be part of my campaign? I didn't know what the campaign was about. And I didn't know who else was going to be in the campaign. It was amazing because it was, I felt like we were all like, beautiful in our own way like obviously I had my crutch my disability Sophie she's a um, burn survivor Tallulah she's a transgender model and Diana she is a plus size model so we're all like different in our own ways and it was so amazing I felt so confident because it was all just being ourselves and it was, there was no like perfect bodies what I try and do on social media as well especially with the mods and I feel like I try and like push like it's okay to like be yourself it's just about self-love and just loving your body despite all these girls on Instagram with their perfect bodies. I think I've realised that I spent so much time like hating my disability and not enjoying life and life is so short. It's, it's okay, life is going good for me at the moment because I'm able to learn from previous experiences and able to adapt to my settings. I'm constantly pushing myself. I've now completed my education. I'm now in a new job. I have a driving license. How do you think your parents feel? I feel like through past conversations, I don't feel like it's a burden on them. I don't feel like they have a problem. They're loving, supportive, understanding. So I don't feel like it's a burden on them. We live in a world that is constantly changing. People's voices are now being heard. No more discrimination against gender, race or disability. However, as a community, we need to be more understanding and listen to people that are different. I would just say listen, listen to the person that's speaking to you, listen to people with disabilities because it's coming first hand from us. I feel like more people need to be like that when it comes to people with disability. I don't expect them to like fall on their knees, I just expect them to understand that we still can do things that they can do, it might take us longer, but we still can do what they can do. And I think that that's what needs to be understood. Like, you're going to have your own opinion. You're going to do whatever you want to do. But just to have a little bit of more understanding of what disabled people go through in their daily lives. As Temple Garden once said, I am different, but no less. Mm -hmm.